pulpit attendees. We will now have our invocation and song by the Reverend Lovey Hatcher. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. Let us go before the throne of grace. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, you are almighty. And we just want to say thank you, O oh God. We invoke your presence, Holy Spirit, that you would saturate us right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would have your way in this place, God. We come just to say thank you, O oh God, that our names were on the wake-up list this morning, God, and how glad we are. For that, we just simply say thank you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that in all we do today, we won't forget to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And if there's someone who's come today, God, that has a special need, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just grant it by your purpose, your will, and your plan, O oh God. And God, whatever we do today, God, let it all be to your glory, O oh God, in word or deed, God, that you might receive the praise from this day, God. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. He's my friend. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. You ought to bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Why don't you bless that wonderful name of Jesus? He's my friend. Oh, down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied, singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. Singing glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied sing glory 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 to his name i'm singing glory to his name precious name singing glory 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 to his name oh there to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I would serve him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.
it's at this time that we will have greetings by Sister Lorene Knight. Thank you. Good afternoon. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Kenneth James Flowers, the executive minister, Reverend Leon Moorhead, ministerial staff, officers, members, and friends, we welcome you today to our first annual general mission tea since the pandemic. Little did our pastor know in 2020 when he chose for the year the church theme, Stay Connected, that we will be facing two years of being unable to come together for in-person worship services, not to mention church programs such as annual days and our annual mission tea. We stay connected by way of the prayer line, Facebook, Zoom meetings, and YouTube. It gives me great pleasure to stand here today and welcome you to our annual tea program, Missionaries Putting on the Whole Armor of God. So yes, while today we're back on the prayer line, YouTube, Zoom, and Facebook, we can't wait to see all of you in person again soon. Welcome. We're starting off. We're starting off in a great, great service today. Reverend Lovey Hatcher gave us an invocation that invited everybody in. Reverend Hatcher sang a medley that let everybody know that this is the Mission Tea Day. Not only did she let everybody know that this was Mission Tea Day, we had greetings by Sister Lorene Knight, okay, and she picked up on what happened in 2019. We are coming back. We are coming back. We're coming back. Thank you so much, Sister Knight. Thank you so much, Reverend Hatcher. And it's at this time that as sad as things are, we have precious memories. Precious memories in the form of a memorial tribute. When the circle is named, I want the chairperson to please stand. Sister Deaconess uh, Betty Foreman will do the memorial tribute. Deceased mission members from April 2019 through April 2022. In the year 2019, Sister Elaine Alexander from the Esther Circle, Sister Alfreda Carlton from the Esther Circle, in the year 2020, Sister Geraldine Gary, the Dorcas Circle. Sister Catherine Merck, the Dorcas Circle. Sister Ella Franklin, Esther Circle. Sister Leona Fields, the Esther Circle. Mother Esther Ward, Hannah Abigail Circle for the year 2021. Sister Deborah Smith, the Ruth Circle. Mother Dolly Carter, the Esther Circle. Mother Corrine Wooten, Hannah Abigail Circle. Now the year 2022. Sister Mildred Fletcher, the Dorcas Circle. Sister Rosalind Boyd, the Deborah Barack Circle. Mother Sarah Callender, the Ruth Circle. Revelations 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth Yea, saith the Spirit, 
that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Missionaries putting on the whole armor of God. Dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We ask a special blessing on all the missionaries that will speak on their armor today. We ask, Father God, that you would give them a word with clarity and holy boldness. In Jesus' name we pray. In 2020, we were given this, Dorcas was given this assignment. We thought that two years later that this cup would have passed from us. However, here we are. We are here to lift up the name Jesus and to uh, let everybody know about the whole armor of God and that that is something that we must do on a daily basis. We then gave each chair, each circle an armor. And in giving each circle the armor, their chairperson chose a person from their circle to present said armor. Mother Linda Bassett has made a model, a model, a model on how we should be dressed on a daily basis. There are six pieces of armor, and it's from head to toe. It's what we need to do every day. Sister Kara Spivey will be the pointer of the armor when the, the missionary is speaking on it. Now here we go. The Apostle Paul wrote many epistles, and in writing those epistles, we chose one of his writings, which was the whole armor of God. That armor is to be used on a daily basis. We put it on, okay, like we brush our teeth in the morning, like we wash our face in the morning, like we say, thank you, Lord, for today. We want to be ready to go into battle, and we want to do it as a daily thing. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 20, and it reads, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual evils of in heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand. Stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. With the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. With your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, which is which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, Words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. That is the word of God. The uh, next person that you will hear will be our vice president, Sister Lucille Willingham. She will be giving us the introduction to the whole armor of God. Good afternoon. The Apostle Paul 
whose name changed from Saul to Paul, was a Jewish militant who persecuted Christians until he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. He was converted, divinely chosen, and commissioned to preach that Jesus was the Son of God, the Messiah. Paul traveled all over preaching Christianity. Many times he was persecuted, beaten, and even in prison as a result of his messages. It was while Paul was in a Roman prison, it was while Paul was a Roman prisoner that Paul sent instructions to the Ephesians and ultimately to us as to why we need the full armor of God. Ephesians 6 verses 11 through 13 says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Paul tells us that we as Christians are not fighting an earthly battle that can be won with earthly weapons, but rather we are fighting spiritual warfare powers that we cannot see. In order to stand, we must be able to fight. In order to fight, we must be equipped. In order to be victorious, we must put on the whole armor of God. The full armor of God consists of six pieces. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. Each piece has a specific purpose and is designed for our protection and covering. Just as soldiers would not go to battle unprepared, neither should we. In order to be prepared, fully equipped, and with this spiritual battle, we must put on the full armor of God. Thank you. Our vice president has told us what we need to go into battle. She did an awesome job on introducing the whole armor of God to us. Look at the model. Pay attention to the model. Mother Linda Bassett made the model for us so that we would know what we have to do on a daily basis. I know that it sounds kind of repetitive, but it's what we have to do on a daily basis. Thank you so much, Sister Willingham. The belt of truth is the first armor that we put on. Sister Constance Smith, of the roof circle will expound on that. Now, what is the belt of truth? The belt of truth is the first piece of the full arm of God to be listed in Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. The passage begins with the admonition from the apostle Paul to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. This is the key to understanding the armor of God. All the pieces of the armor belong to him and come from him. Truth, righteousness, the gospel of faith, and salvation are all gifts of God to his people for their defense. All except the sword to help us to stand against the schemes of the devil. Verse 11. 
The belt of truth is the first part of the armor. It is listed because without truth, we are lost and the schemes of the devil will surely overpower us. It is fitting that the belt of truth is the first piece of the whole arm of God. See, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Go ahead, go ahead. Taken from John 14, 6. It is only through him that we come to God. Therefore, the truth is the utmost important part in the life of a Christian. Without truth, the rest of the armor would be of no use to us because we would not have the spirit of truth. John 15, 26. In referring to the whole arm of God, Paul invokes the image of a soldier ready for battle. The belt of a Roman soldier in the Paul's day was not a simple leather strap such as we wear today. It was a thick, heavy leather metal band with protective pieces hanging down from the front of it. The belt held the soldier's sword and other weapons. The belt of truth is the spiritual armor linking the truth and the word of God. John 17, 17. The word of God is truth. Depending upon the translation of Ephesians 6, 14, we are fastened to the belt of truth around us. That's the ISV. We buckle the belt around our waist, the NIV, we gird our waist with the truth, K, the New King James uh, Version, or we gird our loins with the belt, the NASB. No matter, no matter which wording that we use, we are actively laying hold to the truth and use it. The belt of truth is a crucial piece in the defensiveness, armor, guarding our inmost being in the battle against the lies and deceptions of the enemy. Without an understanding of truth, we are left vulnerable to being carried away by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the craftiness of deceitful scheming. And Ephesians 4.14 says the belt of truth protects us and prepares us for the battle that is part of every Christian life. Live such good lives that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deed and glory God. 1 Peter 2.12. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that we have. But this we do with gentleness and respect. 1 Peter 3.15 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Sorry. John 3.16. Yeah. That is the divinity that is set by God. Now, the point of authenticity is that the belt of truth, the truth shall set us free. Yeah. Good word. Good word. Good word. Let us thank Sister Smith for those words of truth because the belt of truth will set you free. The breastplate of righteousness, it covers the chest. Sister Linda Wilson of the Eunice Circle will expound on that. Good afternoon. The breastplate of righteousness. The second piece of armor that Paul discusses in Ephesians 6 is the breastplate of righteousness. So why does Paul call it a breastplate of righteousness? If we do not protect ourselves with righteousness, we open ourselves up to attack from the enemy and can fall into sin. God offers his righteousness to every believer in Jesus Christ. Righteousness is not something that anyone can gain by doing good deeds. It comes from faith in Jesus Christ. Putting on breastplate of righteousness means believing in Jesus Christ and his righteousness not on our own, found in Galatians chapter 2, verses 20, 21. Standing firm against injustice and corruption, found in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 15, and Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, knowing that God promises his protection against the forces of evil for those who have faith in Jesus Christ, found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. So remember, 
Put on the preservation of righteousness so that to protect yourself from the attack of the enemy. Be knowledgeable of God's word and try to live a way that's honorable to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Wilson. We definitely know that we need to keep our chest covered because of all the vital organs that are in there. And we know that our heart is in there. It is now time for the shoes, the gospel of peace, which gives proclamation. Sister Sharon Hayes of the Esther Circle will expound on that. Good afternoon, Mission Sisters. Okay. Ephesians 6, 15, King James Version. And your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace makes a believer ready for spiritual battle. Anyone who's walked around outside with no shoes knows that some areas are virtually off limits when you're barefoot. Shoes give you the ability to go almost anywhere. Shoes also provide traction. The gospel anchors our faith in certain basic universal truths. Without that, we find our foundation slipping. One of the modern world's most common problems is stress. Yet the peace given through the gospel is the answer to most of our daily anxiety. We can cast our cares on God because he cares for us. 1 Peter 5, 7. Further, connecting the concept of shoes with the gospel of peace may also suggest that the ideal of believers taking the gospel into daily battles, sharing it wherever they go, Matthew 28, 18, 20. Believers are given the gospel of peace in order to be ready for battle and to help others facing spiritual attack. In the same way, when we wear the sandals of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we will be more than just competent to go places in obedience to God. We will never fear whatever comes our way because he has already defeated the enemy yes. and he will never leave us nor forsake us. Standing on the gospel allows us to have a secure, secure footing no matter what we face in life. Mm -hmm. The shoes, the preparation of the gospel of peace gives one motivation and prepares one to proclaim the good news. Amen. We want to thank Sister Hayes for that, because we don't want our feet to be stepping in the wrong places. Wherever God sends us, that is holy ground, because we are children of God. So we want to walk in the light of God. We want to stand in the holiness of God. Thank you so much, Sister Hayes. It's at this time that we have the shield of faith, which catches the fiery darts. Sister Sandra Crum of the Deborah and Barack Circle will expound on that. Let's hear her. Good afternoon, sisters. The shield of faith. What is the shield of faith? The Greek word for the shield of faith is theros. It's a large shield with four corners to protect soldiers. It's a shield of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. The word major means shield in Hebrews, found in Genesis 15. The word came to Abram in a vision. God stated to Abram that he is his shield. That is his covenant with him. The Lord is our shield of salvation. He is our faith. He's our strength and our protection. It is his gift to us. This shield protects our bodies from the fiery darts, from the evil one. Second Samuel 22 and 33 talks about our faith is called my shield. Fiery darts from the enemy appear sometimes as desires, appetites, passion, weaknesses of all sorts, wishes, and cowardice. That comes without warning. The arrows are invisible until we feel it burned in man's breast. Always have your shield of faith in place. Three things we need to remember about the shield of faith. The faith 
The shield of faith will protect us from the fiery darts and debris from the enemies. It will progress us into the enemy's territory to retrieve what he has stolen. And third, it will cause our enemies to have to make adjustments in their game plans on their attack against us. Let us not misuse our shield. It is misuse of the shield of the name, claim, decree, and declare that stuff isn't the will of God for us. The second is to avoid and prevent tests and trials that is God's will for us. And thirdly, let's not hold on to erroneous principles and practices that contradict the teachings of the scripture. Remember our shield of faith is a gift to us. It protects us. Please let us use it wisely. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's what we need to do. Thank you so much, Sister Crom. We need to have our shield available so that fiery darts that the devil throws at us can be caught and we can lift up the name Jesus through all of our trials and tribulations. The helmet of salvation, it protects our head. Sister Carleen Bryan of the Hannah Abigail Circle, she will expound on that. Let's hear her when she comes. Good afternoon. The helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation is the great hope of final salvation that gives us confidence and assurance that our present struggle with Satan will not last forever. We will be, be victorious in the end. We know the battle is only for this life, and even a long earthly life is no more than a split second compared to eternity with our Lord in heaven. The helmet of salvation is used in terms of divine warrior in Isaiah 59, 17. For he put on the righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the gar uh, garment of vengeance for clothing and was clad for zeal as a cloak. The passage talks about God sending a warrior armed also in a breastplate of righteousness and a cloak of zeal. To put it on is learning to speak differently about others. The Bible warns us, okay. The Bible warns us everywhere about the dangers of the tongue. So we're going to fight for peace, love, and unity among all peoples. We must watch the words that comes out of our mouths. Amen. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the shield, which is the word of God. The helmet of salvation for a Christian is the protection needed to wear and utilize all the pieces of the armor properly. Every battle be begins in the mind. Protecting the mind is of the utmost importance, for it is where the battles are won or lost. The function of a helmet is to protect, and more importantly, your brain from injury. The human brain controls movement. The function of vital organs, memory, and speech. It also controls your thoughts. Your brain, if your brain is damaged, it affects your entire body. Severe damage can impact your mobility, stop organ, organ function, or even cause death. Helmets are a priority for construction workers, cyclists, athletes, because they dr drastically impact injuries to head and brain. In battle, a soldier would be at severe disadvantage without a helmet. Yes, In yes. Roman times, the enemy would just attack the soldier's head. The brain controlled decision making and reaction time. They could gain ad the advantage if they are able to injure the soldier's head and cause him to enter a state of confusion. The devil operates similarly in your life. If you're confused in your life or unable, or unable to unstable in your relationship with God, you're more vulnerable for his attacks. The helmet of salvation is only available to believers. Yeah. Why? Because someone who does not trust in the saving grace of Jesus would not want God to protect them from anything. 
unbelievers inadvertently or purposefully decided to face life battles on their own. It's not dependent on what you do or say, but on God's perfect grace. You might fail, but God never will. All right, All right now. All right now. Thank you, Sister Bryan. Thank you, Sister Bryan. Our head, the helmet of salvation, it covers our head. We can't allow Satan to infiltrate our mind with any of his ugliness. We have to keep listening up the, the name of Jesus because the helmet of salvation, as Sister Bryant said, is for believers. We now have the sword of the spirit. And of course, we all know what the sword of the spirit is. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. Pay attention to this model. That's head to toe. Six pieces, and this is our last piece. Sister Deaconess Dion Smith will expound on that. Let's hear her. Good afternoon, everyone. God wants us to always be fully clothed in our daily walk with him. Just like when we walk outside in the snow, we have on our coat, our hat, our gloves and boots. God has given us a spiritual dress code. This armor, or dress code, in our daily walk includes the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It is a spiritual weapon to deal with spiritual warfare. The sword of the spirit divides what is true and guides us in making the right decisions and walking according to God's will and way. When you are traveling through the wilderness and feel naked and afraid, the word of God or the sword of the spirit will always cover you and protect you from danger, from danger seen and unforeseen. This sword will carry you through the fire and the rain. Say that. The word of God will always help you stand firm when you may be facing fear. Hebrews 4 and 12 says the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a double-edged sword. Say that. Say that. Psalm 119.105 says the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yeah. And we know about John 1 and 1. And the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, oh, yes. Oh, yes. and the Word was God. Yeah. So, if God is the Word, and we walk with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, God will constantly be covering us and be for us. And if God be for us, then who can be against us? Yes. Yes. Knowing all of this, we should always walk through life with the sword of the Spirit, as part of our spiritual dress code. And with prayer in our hearts, we will be ready for spiritual warfare. And the devil has to flee. All right. Amen, amen, amen. We thank you so much, De Deaconess Smith, because the sword is your weapon. The sword is your life. The sword is your walk. If you have the word of God with you, you are never without the sword. Well, finally, it's come that time where we're at the hermeneutical bridge, Pastor Flowers, and Deacon Viola Lewis is going to wrap everything up and bring everything on up to date for us today. Let's hear her as she comes. the whole armor of God. We have been reminded today by six women of God about the armor that we as Christians should be wearing. God has provided the armor for us and we dare not omit any part of it. The armor of truth, the armor of righteousness, the armor of peace, the armor of faith, the armor of salvation, and the word of God. We need to put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand. The word that I want us to let sink into our spirits today is stand. As Christians, we should stand because our relationship, because of our relationship with Christ Jesus. In good times and in not so good times, we should stand. Our armor is a spiritual armor because we are fighting a spiritual battle against an enemy, Satan. 
This armor is made up of six attributes of Jesus Christ. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, uh -huh. and I'm paraphrasing, that we cannot go into battle with our enemy half-dressed. We cannot just be clothed in truth and righteousness and peace and think we can fight against Satan. We also have to have faith, salvation, and the word of God, Amen. the whole Amen. armor. Paul tells us to use every piece of God's armor so that we can resist the enemy whenever he attacks us. And we find in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 7b, James tells us, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, we know he'll flee, but he's not gone for long, right? Amen. He will try us again and again and again. Say that. Satan is always on the attack, so we cannot afford to let our guard down because he is cunning, he is crafty, and he is bold. Say that. Do any of you remember reading in the book of Job, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7? And again, I am paraphrasing. It says, one day that the sons of God gathered to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came too, probably uninvited. And when the Lord asked him what he, where he had come from, Satan told the Lord that he had been roaming the earth, walking to and fro. And you know what? Satan is still roaming the earth today coming to us uninvited. Now, I know many of you are thinking I didn't finish the verse because most of you, like myself, grew up saying, walking to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. Yes. Now, while I'm not saying that it isn't in the Bible, I am saying that it's not in Job chapter 1, verse 7. <laughs> Amen? You know, Satan is bold when he would dare come to a meeting with the Lord and the sons of God. So that lets us know that he wouldn't think twice about coming upon you or I. Right. He is probably sitting among us right now. Say that. Just when you think you can relax, he pops his ugly head up again. But nowhere in these passages of scripture does it tell us as Christians to advance on or attack our enemy, no matter how often he approaches us? But we are encouraged to stand. Now, as a single parent, most of my son's lives, and not having any immediate family in the Detroit area, I didn't want my sons to go out into this mean world unprepared. So I instructed them at an early age, never start a fight, but always be prepared to defend yourself if your enemy attacks you. And Paul is saying to you and I today, don't advance on your enemy, don't try to attack your enemy, but stand. Stand today with God's truth, with God's righteousness, with God's peace. I know it gets hard sometimes. Friends may turn their back on you. People may talk about you. Your money may get funny. Death of a loved one may seem unbearable. But you keep standing. You stand with God's faith, with God's salvation, and with the word of God. Throughout my Christian journey, I have heard preachers say that our armor covers the front of us and we don't need a covering for our back because God has our back. And that is true. God has our front and our back. Say that. Amen. Amen. But I dare to take it a little farther and tell you today, the reason we don't have armor on our backs is because we are in a spiritual warfare. And as Christians, we do not retreat. I check with Webster's Dictionary for the word retreat, and it says to retreat 
is to withdraw as from danger. And you know, Satan will have open season on a retreating Christian. He will come at you with things like doubt, fear, disbelief, lies, unnecessary worry, or whatever the case might be. But I want to remind us today that God's word tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13b, and having done all to stand. Then verse 14a picks it up and says, stand therefore. I went back to Webster. And Webster says, therefore simply means for this or that reason. So that lets me know that we are to stand in Christ Jesus for whatever the reason. We don't back down. We don't give in to Satan's trickery. Paul also tells us in verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 6 to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not in our might, because we can't do anything without the Lord. But in the power of his might, we are to be steadfast and unmovable in the Lord. So today, I encourage each of us to do as the songwriter so powerfully puts it. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead till every fold is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Listen, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day, the noise of battle. The next, the victor's song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the king of glory shall reign eternally. So in closing, I ask each of us, how are you dressed today? Are you clothed with God's truth, God's righteousness, God's peace, God's faith, God's salvation, and God's word? If not, I beg of you to put on the whole armor of God and do what? Stand. Stand. God bless you. Amen. If you don't get anything out of today, The whole armor of God is what it's all about. And if you have the whole armor of God, then all you have to do is stand. Stand for righteousness. Put on the whole belt of truth. Deacon Viola Lewis brought everything down front. Now we're going to have a solo and our call to discipleship by our pastor. The solo will be by Reverend Betty Pulliam. And our pastor will call the for discipleship. Pastor Flowers. Amen, church. Amen. We've had a preach day today, haven't we? But we know that God is awesome and he can do anything but fail if we just keep our faith. my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars 
And I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior. God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in a humble adoration and then proclaim thou art thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior, Savior, Savior. How great, how great thou art, how great thou art, how great, great thou art. church praise his name because you see God is wonderful God is marvelous uh, and God is great amen thank you Jesus uh, thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you for his armor thank you for his greatness thank you Lord how great how great how great Thou art, hallelujah.
then sings my soul. My Savior, can I get a witness up in here? My Savior, God to thee, how great thou art. Anybody know that today? How great. I said, how great thou art. Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul. My Savior, my Savior, God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Give God some praise as we stand on our feet. The doors of church are open at this time. Candidate for baptism. Or you can come by letter or Christian experience. You know, Good Friday, they have the seven last words. And there are seven different sermonettes. Today, we had seven sermonettes. Help me, Holy Ghost. I listened carefully. And I said to myself, each one may need to get a license to preach. Help me, somebody. I listened to Connie talk about the belt of truth. Linda Wilson talked about the breastplate of righteousness. Sharon Hayes, the shoes of the gospel of peace. Sandra Crum, the shield of faith. Carlene Bryant, the helmet of salvation. Dion Smith, the sword of the spirit. And then Deacon Viola Lewis took us on home talking about finally. Finally. I listened how each one expounded. And they didn't just expound in a, in a short way. They expounded with scripture using the word of God. There may be someone watching today and you have heard the whole armor of God. You've been going through something and wondered, how am I going to make it? Now you know. Just call on Jesus. And so while we are standing today in your living rooms, in your homes, wherever you may be watching, we invite you to now pray the prayer of faith. Confess your sins to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. Why don't you come today and give God your heart? I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Why don't you come today? I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I would serve him till I died. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, now when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit and he owned me as his child around the throne of grace. He appoints my soul a place. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my, say it one more time. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, well, I promised him that I, I what promised him that I, I said I promised him that I, I promised him that I said I would serve him till I died. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord.
give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Sister Lucille is coming back. Are you coming back, Bernice? Bernice is all right. Sister Lucille Willingham is coming. Then Reverend Christmas. And then I'll come back with final remarks and the benediction. Amen. Hopefully something has been said that will inspire you to put on the whole armor of God. The world is changing in so many ways, but we know that God never changes. His word is true today, tomorrow, and always. We had to do things a little differently today for our tea, but thanks to Reverend Flowers, Reverend Moorhead, our president, Reverend Christmas, all of the members of the Department of Mission, and you. We made adjustments, but we're here. To God be the glory. Good afternoon. It is great to be here to see all of my sisters in Christ today. We have not gathered since April of 2019 when we had our last tea. When I signed the Dorcas Circle, um, I always get them two years to do the tea in 2019. And they thought they had gotten away with 2020. They just merely had a little break. But I'd like to thank uh, the members of the Dorcas Circle for such a wonderful presentation of the whole armor of God. I don't have too much to say, but I just want to thank them and thank all of our members for being here. I didn't know how many was going to show up, but it is so good to see all of you. You know, we come to service, but we rush in and we rush out. But it's just great when I asked Pastor Flowers if we could do the tea program today, and I talked to Reverend Moorhead, and he said, of course, I'll record it for you all. So I'm grateful to Reverend Moorhead and Amen. LJ and Mariah for always working. And I told Reverend Leon he need to give him a raise. He looked at me real strange. But Pastor Flowers, we thank you for allowing us to do this on today. Prayerfully, next year, we may be able to come in person again like we normally do and have all our um, members from the various churches come with us. Um, so we're grateful. Thank uh, Minister Sherrod today for agreeing to come to play for us on today. Normally, we um, have a contest between uh, the circles where whoever raises the most money, they will get a prize. Um, and we usually give them a certain uh, monetary amount to use in their circle for their various projects. This time, we didn't, weren't able to have any fundraisers, so we didn't do uh, what we normally would do. Uh, we normally raise fifteen, twenty thousand dollars with all the circles trying to compete. But I'll just say 
I'd like to thank you all today for what you did do. And, and I'm going to um, just mention what you all did. Dorcas Circle raised $1,546 which would have been first place. All right, Dorcas. All right, Dorcas, stand up. <laughs> Deborah Barak raised $700, which would have been second place. And the Joanna Circle would have been third place with $500. But believe me, everybody is a winner. We're not doing our normal So the total that we raised for this occasion is $3,679, which I think is great. So we thank all of you. Now to our viewers, this will be presented on uh, Facebook and on um, YouTube on the fourth Sunday of April. We urge you and we thank you for the gifts that you will give to us so that we may continue the work that we do here at Greater New Mount Moriah. You can give in several different ways. Uh, give Lafay, send a church check to the church, or cash app. So we do thank you, thank you, thank you for the gifts that you will be giving to us. And we appreciate it so very much. Now I would just like to make an um, announcement. Do I have a piece of paper on me? I thought I had an announcement that um, Reverend Leon gave me, but maybe I don't. But on this Sunday, this Sunday, this Sunday, this Sunday, the 10th of April, we will celebrate our pastor's 27th pastoral anniversary. We invite you, if you like, to come to the sanctuary to worship with us. If you can't come in the sanctuary, you can see it on both YouTube and on Facebook. But we celebrate our pastor um, on today. 27 years putting up with us. And y'all know it's hard to put up with us. So, Pastor, we're grateful. And we thank you for putting up with us. There will be several ways where you can give uh, to our pastor. Uh, What's your cash out, Pastor? Dollar sign, Kenneth 61. Dollar sign, Kenneth 61 is his cash app. Or you can send a check to the church made payable to Kenneth Flowers. But give what you can. Give from your heart. No amount is too small. No amount is too large. So we thank you. We thank you. We thank you once again. Girl, I mean, y'all look so pretty out there. I, I, can't, I'm a little tongue-tied today, but I'm grateful for all of you all, and I say thank you. Let the church say amen, say amen again. I want to thank Reverend Christmas for that announcement. Although those watching, by the time you see this, the anniversary will be over. Amen. Uh, but I guess you can still give. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but we thank and praise God uh, for that announcement. Give God some praise for the Reverend Dolores Christmas. And I know that she is tongue-tied today for a reason. Uh, she's under great duress, as I announced on Tuesday night at Bible study. Her daughter, uh, Jacqueline, uh, has been diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer, uh, as well as a large mass in her liver. And she just shared with me that she's a six-year survivor of breast cancer. 
And we just believe that God's going to do it again. Amen? That God's going to do it again. And so, Reverend Christmas, I know that your heart is heavy. That's why you're tongue-tied. But I want you to know, and you take this back to Jackie, that there's nothing too hard for God. The theme for tomorrow, and I'm saying this, I know it's after, it'll be whatever, but our theme for tomorrow comes from Psalm 124, verse 1. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. And, and, and the theme for tomorrow and the sermon for tomorrow is how I got over. And so I want you to know that as she got over six years ago, we're going to pray that God will bring her over again. And your soul and her soul will look back and wonder how we made it over. How I got over. Just continue to trust God. Play that for me, Sherrod. Father God, we bless your holy name. We thank you for Jackie as the Reverend Dolores Christmas stands in the gap for her today. We point in her direction, praying for healing, praying for deliverance for her daughter, that you will give her divine healing, touch her pancreas, touch her liver. Oh God, shrink the tumor. We know you got all power in your hand. Make a way out of nowhere. In the name of Jesus, we touch and we agree, and we claim healing right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 How I get over. Get over. How I get over, my Lord. And my soul looks back and wonder, wonders, wonders how I got home for my Lord, how I got home. Somebody been through something today. How did you get over? You had on the breastplate of righteousness. You had on the belt of truth. Can I get a witness up in here? You had on the whole armor of God. How I got over, how I got over, my Lord. And my soul looks back and wonders, 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 how I got over, my Lord. Let the church say amen. As we prepare to leave from this place, Reverend Christmas talked about how happy she was to see all of you here today and I'm so happy it's just like old times help me somebody I see my nurse nurse Betty here today give God some praise for nurse Betty who's been out ill we thank God for her being here today and I see so many of you here today thank God for you um, Lotus we've been praying mightily for you God is able and uh, is that um, Valencia back there I thought praise God for Valencia we've been We've been praying for you, Valencia. Amen. I, I, thought, I thought that was you. We've been praying for you that God will heal your body and your presence here today signifies and shows that God is a healer and he is a deliverer. And so I praise God. Anyone else here today for the first time in a long time? I see Betty. I see Valencia. Anyone else good to see uh, Sister uh, Wilson today? Dimples, glad to see you here today and see Lorraine Wilson, uh, anyone, not Wilson, Lorraine Shaw, amen. Anyone else here today, we praise God for you. I just want to say as we prepare to conclude that as I listened, I was serious about those messages. I leaned over to Minister Sherrod Grant when he came over and sat in the back, and I said, you know, every message today that they have given have all been scripturally based, I said, I don't know if they wrote them themselves, if they had a script. I said, but it was powerful. And I just want to thank you all for what you all did today. And, and, and I want to say this, Reverend Moorhead can attest to this. Those of us who are ripping and running in ministry and preaching and teaching and doing Bible study and all these things on a regular basis, a weekly basis, sometimes you get burnt out. And, and sometimes we need to be fed ourselves. 
So I was just enjoying Bernie's help me, Holy Ghost. I was just enjoying sitting there listening to the word of God coming and being poured into my spirit so that I could be fed. And so I thank all of you. Every last one. I'm sure Red Moorhead was up there rejoicing, praising God because we get burnt out. We get burnt out. And people don't realize that the preachers need to be preached to also. Help me, Holy Ghost. And so I thank and praise God. And I want to thank you all for 27 years. Uh, Reverend Christmas mentioned um, 27 years. But I just thank God for each of you because 27 years is a long time. But I praise his holy name for being here for 27 years. And as the mission grows stronger, things are different after the pandemic. But you're still looking good. You're still looking good with your scarves, your colors on, your white, and it makes me feel good. I was sitting there just listening and rejoicing and praising God, and I started reflecting down memory lane about these last 27 years and how God has kept me, how he's kept me doing heart surgery and through stents and rotator cuff and ups and downs and sickness and all those things, how he's kept you all. I, I, I think about, and I'm about to take my seat, how... I preached about being on trial for Stephen. Is there enough evidence to convict you? I, I taught the other night and I mentioned about blessed are ye when men shall revile you and shall persecute you and shall say all manner of evil falsely for my sake. But he said rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward which is in heaven. You will be attacked if you keep preaching and teaching and doing God's will. You will be attacked. But guess what? You got the whole armor. So when the enemy comes against you, just know you're prepared. And if you're not attacked, help me, Holy Ghost, it must mean you ain't doing much. Help me, Holy Ghost. If, you're, if you ain't getting attacked, it means you must not be doing something. So keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on trusting in God. And remember, God compels us to love our enemies, to pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. I praise God for all of you. And Lady T sends her love today as well. And uh, she, you know, she was out hairdressing and all that stuff. We had a funeral today. One of my frat brothers, the former president of our Gamma Lambda chapter, his 22-year-old daughter fell dead. 22 years old, and I had to be at that service today because for the Burt Gaddis, he has three daughters. I have three daughters. He had open heart surgery. I had open heart surgery. He had heart issues. I had heart issues. And just found out that his baby girl, his 22-year-old daughter, developed the same heart issues that he had, had just gotten a big job in Seattle with McDonald's Corporation, and after working for a year or so, just collapsed and fell dead. And so I'm asking you all to pray for the Gaddis family. So we were there today ministering with that family. And those of you who've lost children, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Naomi and others who've lost children. When you've lost a child, uh, there's, there's a pain that, that's hard. Viola, there's a pain that that's that's there and so uh, i asked lady t if she could minister to his wife and uh, and when we left last sunday his wife stopped me and she said pastor flowers she said i can't thank you enough for bringing your wife by because she was able to say things to me as a mother that you couldn't say help me holy ghost and so be in prayer so uh, lady t she was with the family today and then trying to get ready for tomorrow, so she sends her love. It's which why she's not able to be here today. But let's keep on praying, let's keep on trusting, and the Lord will make a way somehow. Bernie's, Reverend Bernie's, that was the eighth sermon. Help me, Holy Ghost. She did a little sermon that's in between. I heard Lovey singing when I was upstairs, getting ready to come down. I thank God for all of you all. This has been a great day, a great day. As we prepare to leave from this place, I love you all. Oh. I always forget to thank our finance committees. Amen. So Gwen and Maislin, thank our finance committee. 
and those uh, others who work on the Finance Committee. We thank you, sir, for very much. When we sang our mission song, uh, Deaconess um, Foreman, would you kind of lead us through this song? Amen. So don't we, we don't be all over. Okay. So we do the benediction after the song? Okay. We're going to do This Is My Mission to the tune of Blessed Assurance, and then after that we'll do the benediction. Blessed with his goodness, blessed with his love, blessed with his showers that come from above, blessed with his sunshine, blessed with his air, I'll go on helping every God gives the courage, faith leads the way onward, we travel yeah. Keep thinking of others, willing to share, picking up a message everywhere, remembering others, whenever I pray, look. This is my mission. This is my prayer. Helping the need everywhere. This is my mission. This is my prayer. Helping the ready. Everywhere. <laughs> now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless with his present exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore. Let your hearts stay together. Amen. 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 God bless. Holy hug from the pulpit. Here's my hug to all of you. We love you all. We thank God for all of you. Amen.